trade with him going off every single map. I'm really excited to see 04, what he can bring to the Seattle roster because they need some life, man. They need some rejuvenation in their gameplay, and hopefully he's the guy to bring it to them. In particular, the respawn has been abysmal. I mean, yeah. flat out terrible. 2-12 and 12 in the hard point, and then out of the last 16 controls, they've won one. So Damn. no better time for the respawn reset to come through overall. And who knows? Because we start off things with the six star and we kind of were looking back and forth between both Seattle and Carolina. Like, what were they doing on the maps that were out of the pool now? And well, for Carolina, this is like the biggest blessing to the reset of the season they could possibly have. They oh, were yeah. three and 11 on the maps that are now out of the pool and hard point. So that's going to be good for the news for them. Just getting that invasion out of the picture in particular. Oh, yeah. You see the stats right there. Old maps, at least the ones that that were out three and 11 on those we're talking about the scary on the invasion they were owing in the invasion i don't know why they played it so many damn times but finally that got removed for them so if you're carolina you're feeling great when you talk about the hps the remaining ones that you have you have an overall 10 and 7 record now you're going to start off with a six star you're feeling great you have the smg players and then you also have a couple players who moved into the same facility now carolina they know exactly what it's like to be good on land but now they're putting their focus online to make up more of those points and they need it badly. This is a bubble yeah. matchup right here. Two teams that are fighting to get into the top eight. And like you mentioned, you can kind of already see over on the right-hand side, both Fellow and Gwent have moved to Charlotte. Clayster trying to get on the way. TJ apparently is supposed to be moving on Monday. So Carolina, it feels like the season's almost just starting for them. Oh, yeah. Rejuvenation through LAN, it just comes down to can they find a way to perform online and keep the consistency that we've seen in person from them. And I think if you're Carolina, starting off with a map like Six Star, this is where you have to make it known that we are really enjoying these news maps. I actually got a chance to watch them scrimmage a little bit. They played every single season. They played really, really tight. And TJ, for some reason, has got a read on these maps. So you heard Nameless touch it under the desk. TJ over. It might be in fruition. Yep, here we go. Let's see what happens. Also, lots of eyes on 04. This is a lot of pressure on the new guy. You want to talk about challengers players that get thrown on to teams that are struggling. Often, they don't do all that well. So, lots of pressure to see if 04 can handle the quick rise of the CDL and also try to save his squad possibly to get to the top eight. Yeah, I'm excited to see what 04 can bring. I actually had the opportunity to text my good friend, Rambo Ray, the coach of Seattle Surge this morning, and he said the pickup from 04 has done wonders for this roster. Finally, they're feeling like a complete team, so hopefully they're able to show it early on. But you can see Carolina, they find a clean four dead. They're soaking up the majority of this P1 time. And with only 20 seconds left, it's all about those spawns over towards P2. It's going to be Carolina preferred side with the break coming in for Seattle. Yeah, this is all about what can you lock down here with spawns, like you mentioned, for Carolina being so darn close to the backside of this upcoming second hard point, right inside this giant palm tree room. Brezzy, little water route on the outside. No one's really looking for this. We talked about this, Jay. Often it feels like people just ignore the water because of how difficult it can be to manage. Brezzy finds two, and Seattle find the quick breakthrough. That's perfect right there from Seattle to know where the pressure's coming in from and withstand that first push coming in. So now Carolina have to rally the stuns and nays to try to find an opening on the map, but they can't get past Prezi, who's been holding down this overextension through the bridge side, and Carolina have not been able to sniff even close towards this hard point. You have a couple players going on a pinch, so a potential break going to come in now. Yeah, a little split spawn situation, but Brezzy picks it up nicely. Gwindo, pistol out for a double. Now it's just down to what he could do versus 04. And oh, hello, <laughs> both players running out of ammunition. But 04 is able to get the better of one. Enough time delayed for Hook to try to give one more go at the hard point, but they do get bounced back. So Carolina looking at the last scrap time here pretty successfully, all things told. Abu's the last one left, and well, he will be flushed out in the 1v1. So this battle for scrap, not really where the focus goes as you've got Gwyn on rotation early, winning a key one over towards P. Three. Oh, yeah, but you would take that if you are Seattle. You apply pressure early on towards P2. You know that you were the team at least controlling the spawns early on for this P3. But with Gwyn winning that one-on-one -on -one through the back end, now you have to put your focus towards the back side. And that's an early two kills coming in for Carolina. The trades are going to be there for Seattle. So it's an all-out mix fest in towards the P3. But you see Carolina, they're starting to set up the pitch. They're finding the kill. They should be able to find the break. Yeah, looking pretty likely for it. Although... Who put a lot of damage in with Abuza. Isn't quite able to finish off any eliminations. That could have made life a little bit easier on this second attempt. Brezzi timing around the back gets caught. And that is a clean feed here for Carolina. Still 30 seconds to fight for it, but Brezzi does spawn behind. Ooh. And the Ravens are not expecting this. Yeah, there's no way in hell they're going to be able to read this spawn. Brezzi's going to be able to at least get one for his endeavors. But the trade is instantly going to be there. Now it's on Gwyn. Can he hold on for the rest? No, he cannot. So with only 15 seconds left, that's going to go in favor of Seattle. But now we're going to a P4, where I feel like on 6-star, this is the hill where you can potentially set up for a full 60. So let's see how Carolina set up. Opening shots will happen down towards this bottom side. 
over the top of the headies. Most of these gunfights will persist. Fellow trying to make his way forward and finding a double. Really well done. Gwyn also setting a front line just in front of the U-turn. Good read on 04 who can't quite finish off the kill. 30 HP remaining. Just another bullet was needed, but not going to come through. And the last couple of Seattle players are going to get picked apart right in front of the hard point. Oh, but see the spawns. They're not going to flip. And I don't know if Clayce is going to get a read on it. You know that the pressure's still coming in from the front. But at least you win that one-on-one. -on -one. The rest of Seattle spawn behind you. So they're going to be able to get the break for at least 30 seconds if they can hold on. Carolina trying to set it up with the stuns and aids over the top. You have 0 for one shot. Let's try to send it. But so far, this has been a good setup from Seattle. Great reach yep. out right there from 0 4 to walk away with this potential remaining 20. Yeah, I, you know, looking at the respawn tendencies for Seattle, they've always been really good at rotating early yep. towards hard points, but they've never really been successful in holding any significant time. Where on the flip side, Carolina has been kind of forced to have to break a bunch, but they are one of the top teams in the league at doing so. So it's interesting because the patterns to this point have kind of been opposite. Carolina's rotated great, just haven't been able to hold for more than about 20 seconds, it feels like, per rotation. Yeah, and there was also a big issue with Seattle Search finding Grace as well. They just couldn't find any success in HPs if it wasn't rotations. But so far, the new roster is changing that story as they're currently up by 25. But now we're going into the pool hill where it's very, very difficult. You have to make sure your Michael Phelps, your pistol is hitting from long distance. The route right there from Clayster just swimming around, finessing with his life, staying contested as long as his teammates can help. I mean, this is unreal. <laughs> oh my God. Just using the water as like a bulletproof vest at the moment, even getting the regen off. Him and 04 looking for the pistol battle. And it's actually a team nade that eventually takes him out of commission. I mean, this is. This is worse than Hydra. <laughs> the amount of water gunfights we've had to this point. Oh, man, that's insane. I wonder if, like, do these guys have a perk or something where they're able to hold their breath for that long? Because these guys are not even taking an ounce of air coming out through the top, but. As we're coming to the end of this P5, it's all set up around that P1. It's going to be Seattle Surge currently up by five, but they're the team now set up early on towards P1. Really tight battle. But like you mentioned, this P1, especially the second time around, could definitely lead to some significant time, largely due to the bar headies. But wow, clean. All of it from the front staircase for Carolina. Nade gets one out of the point, and then the follow-up gunfight's absolutely perfect as the Ravens get the early break. And now Seattle have to find a way on in. Texas is going to be these players going for the over extend, but you get shut down through water side. Now Carolina has a read where the final players are coming from. VIP desk area and also from mid U. They're still combining for all the kills in the feed. This is where you have to start applying that pressure, though. And Clayce is trying to at least do so. He does get cut down, but it's still his teammates holding on for this time. Good help from TJ and Fellow on the back side of this, but now it's just down to Fellow. A little bit of a sloppy gunfight over the top of the railings, and that leads to Seattle once again confirming some very important scrap time. Keeps us right about an even game. This has been a thriller to this point. Really big 50-50 tug-of-war game, and now we look over towards rotation, and Seattle will own this opening palm tree to start. Yeah, this is what you expect, though. When a map is freshly into the rotation, teams only had, like, probably a couple days to scrim it, so everyone knows at least one way to play it. So every game basically is going to go down to the wire. But with TJ finding three through the front, Seattle was not expecting that. That early break is going to come right on in as TJ finds all four. Can he find the fifth? No, he cannot. But now his teammates are here to contest it. 50-50 battle, 2v2. Clayster sneaks up through the poolside. That's enough to break the hard point open. Brezzi down low in the pit. Not going to be able to find the successful re-engagement. So with the proximal spawn, Seattle looking to find a way to break and have to rotate. Prime time to see how the surge are coming. He's weak, he's weak, long. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Chow up front, chow up front, chow up front. Nice. One's gonna hit mid, P1, I think. Yeah, just one more time, one more hit. I'm here, I'm waiting for you. I got netted. 
I'm on HP. Think can give up yeah, that. Don't get me. Don't get me. Don't get me. I'm killing me. I'm killing me. I'm killing me. I'm killing me. I was one shot. I'm here. Hit the shot. Hit the shot. Hit the shot. One hit. One hit. One hit. He's going behind you. Let's shoot. Two shots. One could already be new. One could already be new. I've just known. We're good. We're good. We're good. Pass one deep. Let's pass one deep. You on me dead. Nice. I'm on you. I'm blue again. He's one bullet. One bullet. He's passing me. I'm dropping fast. I'm dropping fast. He was one bullet. Okay, okay. I'm going. I'm going to drop you. Nice. 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 Wait, one shot, one shot, one shot! Wait, 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 wait
that's where they were perfectly set up. We're talking about trading efficiently, setting up properly where you have perfect crossfire set up to so Carolina cannot find an opening. And then every time Carolina started off with a couple of kills, they were basically getting tunnel vision. Like, you need to yeah. be able to break that P4 a little bit different. You can't just keep on flooding through top tree, potentially trying to work your way through low secret, because those close ones for Seattle are going to just continuously allow them to funnel their way into the HP. If you're Carolina, you probably got to send someone on a pitch or something like that, but funneling is exactly what Seattle Surge wanted you to do as they are able to take the map number one and now you're feeling confident because you're going into a search destroy where even if it's a new roster you still know this is our bread and butter game mode oh and on top of that if you're Seattle you're also you know looking at a new challengers player into the yep. CDL that has been grinding search and destroy unreal and man. talking about again the reverse sweep in that challengers grand finals 04 was crazy in the SMD so yeah, okay. it feels like it's all good news across the board. Uh, to speak to the other side of the story here, though, Carolina's no slouch on the Evasion Search and Destroy. No. Four and two on it, and that almost feels kind of like a miracle considering that they're one of the worst teams in overall opening duels on this map in particular. So you got to think for Carolina in terms of polishing up your search, it all starts in the first 30 seconds of each round. Oh, yeah, and if you remember the last time we casted them, I don't know who they were playing against, but Carolina basically threw this entire map away. Multiple man advantage. And every time a post plan situation, they had the mana, they lost it. They were just yeah. letting it go. But at least recently for them at the major, you won it all the way in around 11 versus Las Vegas to knock them out the tournament. So you're feeling good on invasion. It's just you have to play faster in certain moments because, like you said, we watch 04 all throughout challengers. The way he's able to dominate that mid tank area, either with the yeah. rival nine or an MCW, that's a guy that's going to be able to make plays happen on the defensive end where Seattle are literally the best team on that side. So you're just fitting in a player who's great at search and destroy, who knows situational plays. So Carolina, you need to be able to play a lot quicker on your attacks. And I like the point that you point out. It's the rival nine or the MCW. He can run either, and that yeah. changes the lookup of what that defense sets up completely. So, yeah, lots of things to look forward to here. If you're Seattle going into one of your, well, your best mode <laughs> on the year at this point, it's hard to say it otherwise, I mean, especially considering how the respawn has looked. But I think for Carolina, you know, looking at kind of their run that they put together throughout not just this most recent major, but also what they did in Boston in Major 1, hey, you clean up the search and destroy a little bit, you start to think that there is a lot of longevity built in, you know, they lose that round 11 versus New York. Otherwise, you know, there's an opportunity to extend that series when they're playing in Miami. You know, that seems to be kind of their weakest point and definitely seems to be kind of controlling a lot of their focus over the course of at least the last major. And it finds it, it's hard for me to believe that because these guys have been playing for a really long time. Like Clay's their fellow, we all came from the SD scene, including TJ. So these guys need to figure out search and destroy. And hopefully, with them, you know, all going to the same facility in their apartment complex, you get those better team comps. So they need to turn around and to destroy and already TJ finding the first blood. Yeah, aggressive setup for Carolina, really setting the tone right through mid cafe. Hook with an AR in hand really can't do much besides just watch this and hope that no one pushes through it because honestly speaking from the offensive lens you're really only left to be uh, there's just no way you're able to clear this not with at least some sort of a cost involved yeah because it's gonna waste at least another 20 to 35 seconds to even work your way up through cafe and now you're forced to make a decision on where you want to apply this pressure. Hoop does get some info on at least one player in towards Gwyn, but the nade is not going to connect with only 45 seconds left. They know we do not have enough time to go yeah. cafe. We have to go B. And Clay is just going to play contact here, and he sees two players on the cross. Now it's just back up. See if you can challenge somebody with these team shots over towards the bomb. Brezzi fighting back, though. Creates a little bit of time and space for 04 to get over towards the site, but he drops the bomb. He's looking to get aggressive into ice cream here, and Carolina have no idea on this play. What a giga brain moment from 04. He gets two, and now all of a sudden Seattle can play it. Yeah, he makes this much more manageable win for Seattle Surge. Now in the 2v2 scenario, bomb does get planted at B. Brezzi is able to get away with his life, but now you know the setup if you are Carolina. Do you have any attacks? No, so this is going to be all gunny in this 2v2. And Fellow has to take the long sprint through dark. This is going to take so much time, and he has to hope and pray he can catch someone off guard. And I think Hook may have seen him. Brezzi turns his head over from this dock backside tractor. Focus from the front. Starting to get pulled. Hook shows just enough for Fellow. Shots towards Brezzi. Decent. Off the regen. Takes care of the first, but not the second. Plenty of time for the defuse, and Carolina save the round. Oh, that was on Fellow. Just re-wrapping his way right through the middle of the map. He's able to at least have the angle onto Hook to open up at the first blood. Then once it turns to a one-on-one, -on -one, Gwen at least has Brezzi a little bit weak. So Fellow is able to commit on the gunfight, but he's able to find three on the round. That, almost, that round almost gets away from them, though, with 04's 3,000 IQ play to drop the bomb yeah. and push through ice cream. 
but it's still Carolina on top, finding the first blood, finding success early on in the defense. Well, good moment from Fellow. And on top of that, you have to give a lot of credit to Gwyn for pulling the focus of Seattle away from that push through dark. Yeah. With a couple of stray shots here and there. So little micro things turning into some major moments early. And already, hey, other good news. Carolina showing a little bit of aggression, setting the tempo, setting the tone, and collecting a first blood, which is pretty rare for them in this map. Already changing the story, man. Starting up 1-0. Now you're on the attacking side. And you get first blood all the way across the map. That's not what you want to yeah. do in that situation. Seattle now in a 4v3. And that's the biggest thing, you know, looking back, and we talked about this. You actually brought this up. It was versus Miami, that, that match that we casted, where it's like, guys, just stop challenging silly yeah. things. This one in particular is just kind of a forced play through smoke, seeing if you can get away with something after the first blood was tallied. Not going to happen. Clay able to isolate on one, but he is about to be completely overwhelmed here at Broken and no chance for him to find any space to work with. Yeah, right. Dick Carolina's like, all right, we got first blooded, so let's just try to take mid map. And TJ try to make an individual play walking through the smoke, but Abuza was perfectly set up to locate where he was. And that just definitely, you can just tell, it threw Carolina off guard. First blooded in the first 10 seconds. That's not the way our attacking round was supposed to at least develop. And Seattle serves, they take a full advantage of that. Tied up at one. Yep, good stuff. And look, just stop peeking. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's the frustrating part about this Carolina team at times. It's just, you know, I get it. You want to play for info, but you don't have to force any gunfights. Not across the map like that. The risk versus the ward often doesn't come through as much as you'd like. Another aggressive play. Quinn going to step immediately over towards the glass here at this front cafe building. And he's going to see a couple of players. Alarm bell starting to ring, but the team shot's better. First blood again for Seattle. That's good stuff from Seattle. Great teamwork on full display and towards the cafe. And now you can slowly work your way up through mid tank because you know that Gwen loves to be the player, at least covering over towards that A site. As everyone is just trying to use their attacks to isolate this player towards the middle of the tank, at least blow up that trophy system. You set up Brezzy for the kill, instant 4v2. Yeah, great isolation. TJ trying to step forward to create something on the backside of this flank, but he's going to have to rely on Clayster finding some good timing and he will not be able to. So, TJ, collect what you can at this point. 1v4 plus the defuse required oh. and wait a second couple of over a little bit of overheating here from seattle gives tj a chance he's still got smoke to play with yeah he's got a lot to work with the nade Ooh. the smoke but not the gunny as seattle surged with the numbers even though tj hit some great shots onto 044 double just too strong on the post plant setup you get the first blood you take full control of cafe you're able to find the second as well and then read the player going on the deep pinch as well as the guy going through midcourt. Seattle Surge not making any mistakes so far in the final two, in the last two rounds. Yep, all of it coming with good numbers. Yeah. And that was, you know, again, when we talked about any iteration of the Seattle team, especially at the beginning of the year, they looked like they were going to be the search and destroy demons of the league. And a lot of it came down to not throwing away good numbers. So good discipline still coming through here for Seattle two rounds in a row. Abuza sees, I think, a couple of the players aggressively pushing through A Street, who trying to find the best corner he can. But the back door pops, and he needs to watch a couple of things at once here. And he very wisely finds himself in a position just to mostly read this play through back freezer. Yeah, I swear that door was just open, right, Alan? Am I tripping? I, I, it was open. I swear I to God. I thought it was open. But all right, I guess it ended up closed. But unfortunately, it opens at the wrong time. Hook gets taken down by Gwen. That's an AR up close and personal. Able to find that first blood. But now if you are Seattle Surge, you know where the pressure's coming in. 4 able to find the kill on to Fellow to at least even up the numbers. Yep. Bomb though being planted. 04 gets a look at TJ, but not in time to stop the plant nor find the kill. So the post plant for Carolina all played over towards Cafe. And Gwyn just kind of gives away a freebie here. Decent read from 04, but the shots aren't clean enough. Abuza in trouble. Has the pistol out working with Brezzy, and they do collect the kills pretty darn cleanly. So now you're at a 3 1 tally. Cruise missile earned, and Seattle seem to be all steam ahead. Yeah, and if you're Carolina right there, I know you get the bomb down, but if you're the island player and fellow, you cannot lose that one-on-one -on -one gunfight to 04, at least get bad timing in that situation because you could potentially catch him on a deep pinch. But once you give him that free kill, he turns it into a 3v3, he's able to get the info that the bomb is also going down at A. Everyone backs yeah. up into Cafe. We can push right up through Courtyard. We can take mid-tank control. And Seattle Search did not miss a beat in that situation. Super aggressive up through the middle of the map. Abuza finds a couple of kills. Like you said, earns itself a cruise missile. And now that's three rounds in a row where Seattle Search are just making up for it, even when they don't have the numbers advantage, playing great. It's just good proactivity, and that's kind of always been the staple of the Seattle Search and Destroy, is that 
hey, you know, they may lose one in the process, but it's in the midst of making a play happen. In this particular case, it's all about trying to control the middle of the map and in particular, really focusing a lot of attention towards that front cafe building. And it's worked out really nicely for them on the ability to kind of even in 3v4 situations early still hold great power positions. And I think on the other side, if we were to really be critical here, Hey, I mean, if you're Carolina, you've overchelled a couple of times where you just yeah. don't need to, right? And, and you could just slow things down a touch off these first bloods and, you know, just try to make a little bit more of a heads up play around where your post plant setup is supposed to be. There's just also different scenarios on your attacking rounds where you're not going to really find a lot of success planning that bomb at A if you don't have mid tank control. When sure. you're giving that completely up to Seattle and you're only putting pressure around A site and in towards Cafe, you give them a free avenue to put themselves at an angle to watch you at least walk away from the site or p know what your post plan setup is. So that's one thing that if you're Carolina, you have to be able to take mid tank control, even if you find the first blood, to properly set up for that post plan. Yeah. And. Hey, just kind of looking at it overall, for Carolina, they are the second best team at planting on this map, but the seventh in post-plant win percentage. Yeah. So it really just goes to echo the point they're off the numbers. But as we kind of keep framing it up, you guys might be thinking we're getting a little too twisted here for a Seattle versus Carolina game. But <laughs> friends, believe me you, this is a critical matchup oh, for yeah. both of these two teams, not only because of the recent roster changes for Seattle, but they find themselves separated by five points. And not only that, you look up to the team above you in Miami, hey, you're only 10 points behind if you're Seattle. So you have a chance to put yourself in an immediate tie for top eight and that's the big you know towards we get to the end of the season that's the big focus area i mean you've got the, all those teams on the right side of the leaderboard within the possibility of at least finishing top eight if not better and whenever you play someone between seven to twelve you best come out ready to win so oh, yeah. pivotal bubble matchup here yeah, the bubble matchups are always the best, especially at this point in the year. We're already past that halfway mark. Every single team knows we are doing our best to walk away with a lot of CDL points. That's why Carolina, after Major 2, they're all going into facility because they know we need to get some online wins. We can't just rely on our Lance performances yeah. going out there and get multiple top sixes, top sixes for us to make it in towards champs towards the end of the year. So like you said, everybody on the right column, it's it's bite down and grind right now you have to be able to grind through these online matches and hopefully lag can figure something out because those guys suck online i don't know what the hell's <laughs> going on with that i mean it's really it's been kind of the cataclysm statement of the entirety of this season especially for the bottom four squads and if you're wondering why we're on camera not the game we are dealing with a bit of a player issue a little disconnect at the end of that round so we'll get everything reset and put back together here for you guys but hey i mean i think this is probably one of the first times that we've seen in the cdl this many amount of changes to the map pool at the exact halfway point and it comes with a lot of the teams at the bottom of the leaderboard making pretty significant roster changes maybe not just one player but some relatively unknown players are making their first debut other long-standing players that have kind of dominated their challengers finally getting their chance kind of looking at players like pentagram in particular for that storyline yep. it feels like a reset of the season though because of the new maps that are now in the mix where it almost like, hey, throw away everything from happening in December. Let's just reset, play against the other six teams that are on the bottom of the leaderboard, make it to playoffs, and find a chance to hopefully improve upon what has largely been for these teams not a very successful CDL uh, career to this point. Yeah, I feel like for every single stage, the game has changed. Stage one, we're going into stage two. We got all new hills, a couple new maps. Like, everything was changing so far every single stage in the CDL. But back into yeah. the game, we go. I'm really hoping that Abuza still has that cruise missile to work with, but I'm looking at the numbers. Yeah. Everyone's sitting at 0-0. So he might not have that cruise missile to work with. But it's 3-1 currently for Seattle Surge. The reset comes in, and that, that means that there's no trophy systems over towards this B point, but 0-4 gets some early info. Someone has to be close. All shots are decent. Good help coming through, but the same can be said for Carolina, who's actually getting a little bit aggressive towards DVD at the same time, trying to pinch up this play. Hook will be stunned, but he's able to create enough space and distance to stay safe from it. Aggressive hit, though, around the pinch for Carolina, and it doesn't amount to too much. So Clayser has to back off. He has to value his life and hope that fellow's gone unguarded to this point as he tries to make his play forward. Damn, that's one of those situations where if you're Gwyn, you have to just play off the info that Clays is able to give you. If they're not aggressive up through Broken already, you can't give him a free first blood. Even though Clay's able to find the second kill, at least turn it into a 2v2, you are forced to break in towards the same exact setup, and you have two nades and a stun to work with. Well, this feels a bit familiar. Fellow from one side. It's Clay, though, on the other side instead of Gwyn from before. Nade being cooked. It looks like it's going to be pretty darn good, and yep, it's a Semtex that takes care of 04. Brezzy, same spot. 
Front side tractor getting pinched up, finds the first pistol. Oh, oh, oh he knew he had clay weak, but the shots from Clay are too good. And the defuse will come through getting Carolina their second round. Oh, good stuff right there to Carolina to clutch up in the 2v3. Clayster gets it done through the back end, or at least even up the numbers in the 2v2. And then the team Nate to take down old four. And then the difference right there from Clayster can play it to Funley. Because Fellow just instantly ran at the tractor in the one-on-one -on -one versus Brezzy. But Clayster plays his life in towards ice cream. Waits for Brezzy to go for the chow and reads it to perfection. As Carolina able to stand strong on the defense again. Now down 3-2. These retakes have looked really clean, honestly. And it feels like for the two that we've really had over towards this B site, they've been pretty desperate <laughs> in nature. Yeah. So good stuff for Carolina, defensively speaking. Clayster also with the ace. We'll start building towards a potential cruise missile again. You got to keep in mind that Abuza is no longer in possession of one since the reset. So how quickly things change as Clay Tower is number five. The old man is taking over so far in the search to destroy. Can he find one more kill to earn himself a cruise missile? Seattle Surge again trying to clutch up in the man disadvantage and Brezzy too wide of a shoulder right there. Gives a free one to Gwyn. So now it's a 4v2 for Carolina. This way you just stack up, push out one way together, play your numbers. Yeah, 04, lots of damage towards Fellow. Is trying to red dot chase just to touch him. Whoa, he actually does catch Fellow before the regen comes out. So as the bomb swings over towards A, 04 has a chance to put himself in the spotlight. But as he tries to cross, he will be dealt with. Abu's the last one standing, and he could only find one of the needed three. So Carolina, a couple rounds in a row here since the reset, looking pretty good. Yeah, that's good stuff from Clay to finally open the first one onto Hook, and then Brezzy tries to make up for it with a kill through Dark, but he gets taken down. I just think if it ain't broke, don't fix it if you are Seattle yeah. Surge. There's no reason to get aggressive up through Mannequin, give him a free first skill, try to be the island hero player. Just simply is not going to work out because you know Clayster's always going to be able to watch that overextension. But Carolina now with two rounds in a row, able to tie the game up at three. Curious to see if Clayster was able to earn him his sixth kill off the map. Essentially find himself the cruise missile. Yes, he does. So yep. this game is completely changed now. Wildsteins, trophy down aggressively. Carolina looking to maybe get it again a bit forward here. We saw the same idea, but over towards the A side of the map in round number one. Now it's all about can they get isolation over towards Hook? And all four players here for the Ravens defense are here, but none can tally the kills. And all of a sudden, everything kind of puts a bit of a reset into play. And Seattle has an advantage here over towards A if they can find it. Yeah, you just got to take the space because you gained a lot of info that there was early pressure, a lot of pressure over towards the broken side. So finally, 0-4 and Abuza going to be the dynamic duo to try to work their way up through A Street. But you have to get past Clayster, who's at least putting down a couple shots to make his positioning known. But it's already 45 seconds knocked off the game clock. Hoops able to find the first blood onto TJ. Oh, and 4 follows up through pillars. Good prediction on DeFello. So 4 opens up the middle of the map in with shots coming out of Clay. No problem to follow up. And wow, that is an amazing amount of restraint from Seattle for their ability to stay alive. And what was supposed to be a B hit in the face of four aggressive Raven defenders and then to be able to reset, stretch the defense and find an opening through mid, that's chef's kiss. Yeah, that's good stuff. And keep in mind, this is a new team. You know what I'm saying? So not only get a couple ga couple days of practice in search to destroy, but 04 with the perfect read for the double. Just shuts down that setup for Carolina. Early aggressive up through broken. They got nothing for it. So Seattle surge back on top, up 4-3. But now on the defensive side, you have to switch up your defensive look because you got to keep in mind, Clayster has that cruise missile. And if they decide yeah. to invest it, that B-bomb is going to get planted. Gwyn seen on the cross, 04 with an MCW this time. Again, we talked about his flexibility in particular playing this position. We saw it a lot through challengers and Seattle says, we're not going to try to fix anything that worked out well for you. So keep running it. A little stun check does connect. So a little bit of info here, follow up from Brezzy a little bit deeper just to make sure that this B defense stays pretty formidable and stalwart as ever, Carolina having a tough time breaking past this connection. They have to use the cruise missile. Yeah, the cruise missile is going to get invested. Clay is able to get all the info on where the setup is going to be. Do they decide to isolate Brezzy? He's just going to walk away with his life. The bomb mm -hmm. is now going to get planted. So hopefully Seattle Surge got a couple attacks to trying to break their way back on in. Well, the thing about this for Carolina, it is a 2-2 split on this post plant setup. A couple of players very far deep. Seattle not interested in the flank. Just trying to break this through from the front. There's the retake smoke. When able to collect the first and second. How does he get that done from an isolated corner? Unbelievable stuff from Gwyn. 
Everything coming his direction, takes care of two, and then TJ right through that smoke, pushes out, finds the final, and Carolina get us back to level. Yeah, that's insane stuff right there out of Gwen more specifically, because like you said, it turned into a 2v2. I mean, a 2v4, because the split setup right there for Carolina was not going to be ready for everyone to be bombarding their way through back ice cream, especially with that smoke grenade getting invested, but Gwen was ready for it. He finds a double, and then TJ closes it out with a double of his own. Carolina tie the game at four. Back and forth we go. And that's going to be a moment Seattle looks back on, and I'm sure Ray has probably already highlighted it. Like, guys, if we're smoking tank, we have to check our left. Yes, yes. Why, why are we looking into the smoke? So, tough moment there. Carolina, once again, setting up a little bit of regression here towards B. Ultimately, doesn't come away with too much of anything. Seattle's still interested in the site, and more so than that, Hook will slide over towards Broken. Trophy system in place. It sounded like at the same time, so it looks like Seattle want to give this B hit a go. Yeah, they're taking a lot of ground up through Broken, but it's way different where you try to plus, pass that 50-yard line through Dark and work your way up through the B tank because right now, Carolina's setup is a beautiful crossfire from TJ and Clay. The other two guys are working through mid courtyard and up the A street, but Seattle Surge, they have rallied the troops all out pressure up through the B street. Yeah, there's that late attacking smoke, and yeah, Clay just gets caught looking the long way. TJ also falls, so 4v2. Definitely the more hard pressed of the retakes we've seen so far for Carolina, but they do find an opening pretty quickly. 04 on an aggressive angle. Shot at Badabuza, and Hook will save the day, because boy, I'll tell you for a moment there, started to look like Carolina were gaining some momentum, but it does get shut down. And Seattle right back in the driver's seat. And they just read the setup for Carolina on that defensive end to perfection. They said, there's no one contesting us for mid-dark. We at least watched two players cross towards, or to the, towards the tank. So let's invest our smoke grenade, at least isolate the player over towards boxes, and then find that kill on towards the tank. Get the bomb down. You play your numbers. You stand strong on the attacking round. Seattle Surge now at game point. What's the call here if you're the Ravens? Couple of shots deep from Glacer, just trying to check the cross. Hook inside the front desk, not really able to see too much through the windows. So a bit of concealment here. Carolina taking a slow pause over towards the B site. Will not really be read by any early information gathering from Seattle. I mean, this is really scares me a little bit because whenever Carolina play these slow and steady when the race kind of rounds, they wait to about the final 25 to 30 seconds to make a play. But on a map like Invasion, you're going to get an early read on where that pressure is coming in so you can set up properly on the defensive end to try to withstand that pressure. Mm. But it's a double stack over towards both sides. Already 45 seconds knocked off the game clock in Carolina. This time, they're rallying the troops to go to B. And it did sound like 04 had a trophy system behind him that has been deleted. So he's in a little bit of trouble. Does slip away. How important is that for the Seattle defense? TJ Pistol out, finds the first. Back to the MCW, but Abuza slides forward, finds the kill, and there's no trade. So now 3v3, less than 30 on the clock. And 04 is still in position to try to watch this from inside the site. Hook off the cross. Oh, he's going to find two. And Seattle continue to look real good on Invasion Search and Destroy. Last two rounds go their way, and they take a 2-0 edge of the series. And in that final round right there was 0-4 simply just playing his life. He played his life so well that he sets up a boozer for the freebie to turn it into a 3v3. But the player he took down was the bomb carrier. So Carolina only had one game plan, and we have to commit towards breaking our way in towards B site. Unfortunately, no one watches dark. Hook is able to find a double. And when it turns to a 3v1, Seattle search too strong on the setup. Oh man, this is a new team, Alan. This is a new team. They're looking good. A very close hard point in map number one. Very tight search to destroy, even with the adversity that they had to face <laughs> yeah. with the Boozer losing his cruise missile. They still walk out on top 6 4 and now are up 2 0 in the series. A gritty series at that, though, through these first two maps, and there's no signs of that changing anytime soon. And the real question starts to get posed here to Seattle. Can you win a freaking control? Because it's been <laughs> Please. an eternity since they've been able to find a W, and they are going to one of Carolina's better overall control maps with Karachi coming up. Backside of the break, we have at least that with potential of a sub base. Map number four, and of course, six star for maybe the first time so far on the search and destroy docket. We'll see what we got there, brothers. We'll yes, be back brother. after the break.
upgrade your game with the SCUF, the official controller of the Call of Duty League. The Call of Duty League is brought to you by Monster Energy, the official energy drink of the CDL. Welcome back there, friends, family, all you crazy COD fanatics. We have got woo, a barn burner right now. Surprisingly so, Seattle, Carolina providing some immense entertainment in what has been a very gritty series. 250, 211, the first on six star, and then a six four after the reset. Both favoring Seattle, but now the big question, can they win a control? We got Karachi <laughs> coming up here, Jay. What are they like? One in 15 to the last 16 controls? Yes, sir. They cannot win this mode, but I don't know what to expect today because Seattle says they're winning HPs. Obviously, they stay strong in search and destroy, but this new roster is looking great so far. As we take a look at the control metrics, it's not good for Seattle Surge. Everything is awful. Three and 16, shout out Stone Cold Steve Boston. One and six in round fives. Attacking <laughs> rounds, not the best. Defensive rounds, not the best. And even on the opposing side for Carolina, their stats don't really stick out to you either, but they're a lot better than the way that Seattle Surge are looking. I did not have you giving me a Stone Cold reference on my bingo card today, Jay. <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you, WWE my guy. just happened, bro. Wow. Biggest WrestleMania ever. <laughs> You're twisted for that one. <laughs> but no, I think here's the other part of it. And I think the community overall is probably going to agree with this. Hey, you know, our city's out of the picture has kind of provided Abuza a chance to play a more aggressive kind of mainstay AR. 04 brings a lot of speed and tempo to the mix. And that's been where I think the attacking side has really suffered for Seattle. I mean, they just get put into trouble just largely off of the life count. I mean, they are on average losing by about seven lives per offense, which is not good to put it plainly. <laughs> so if they can find a way, 
to kind of keep the tempo up, find a way to keep the slaying up. There is an opportunity to find success on offense, but we'll wait to talk about that when they get there, because first and foremost, it's Carolina starting on their attack. Yeah, Carolina early on, already onto the A point. You have a couple players from Seattle, though, already putting themselves in great positions. You have junk control, so you're forcing all of Carolina to try to work their way up to the little map and overextend. But Seattle serves to be able to eliminate that player before he completes that first segment. And now you're basically put into a trap. Carolina have to fight out of their base. Yeah, really tough position to be in. Gwyn takes care of at least one member over towards the high ground. But again, the SMG aggression from 04 steps in, tries to set the line of scrimmage a bit further forward. Denied, but still lots of time off the clock. First tick still empty from being completed. But Carolina now with a couple of kills and a lot of focus will make their move. And there should be an opportunity for them to stack here and get the extra 60. Yeah, they also found that kill onto a boozer in towards Junkyard. So you can already see TJ taking a lot of ground over towards that B point. You're forcing Seattle Surge to basically chalk up the A point and rotate their way over towards B. But you have to take care of mm. TJ, Brezzy, great team shots to at least eliminate him from that cafe. And now that's three dead in the feed. You can still apply pressure over towards A. You still have hook over towards top three as well. And Carolina, you have to make a decision because Glacier's probably going to die here on A. And if we don't sign success at B and lose these junk spawns, we're going to get put in a trap again. Yeah, it's a really good creative idea for Carolina kind of getting around the back of the map while Whoa. also getting TJ forward. But you're absolutely right. Player sneaks through and kind of causes it a bit of delay. But off the respawn, Carolina right back in the mix. TJ really lighting it up. Lots of clean shots on the search, but this time getting surprised from behind. Help from his teammates is there as the extra 60 gets tallied in the same Ooh. breath. Clayster's double keeps this mixy as Seattle still struggles to get over the jump wall. Yeah, Seattle is struggling to get over this damn jump wall. And all the Carolina spawns are really close up and personal at red. So they able to reinforce with the numbers. Just got to keep on trading efficiently. TJ with the double, Clayster with the third. Oh, four, you have to try to get something done. You fall, but at least you do have one teammate over the hop wall. No, he drops as well. So here comes the sack for Carolina. This is looking like their round. Yeah, very well should be. Time stops at 122. Two players still on. Fellow and Clayster just absolutely turning Seattle into mincemeat over the top of this dumpster. And there will not be enough time for Seattle to continue forward. Uh, definitely a call saying, let's not give away any more potential streaks. And laughter and giggles are to be had for the Ravens as they take their opening offense. Yeah, that was just good stuff right there from Carolina. It all started off by taking down a boozer from Junk. Once you open up that avenue of attack to apply pressure over towards B, they did not turn away from it. Consistently spawning over towards close red, trading officially in towards bottom ticket, and then coming out on top with a clean two to three dead. Allows them to stack that point, walk away with the first attack. Clean stuff. Moment of hesitation, a little bit of a hiccup there, but largely speaking, like you said, pretty fluid, pretty, pretty solid. And now the question that we've been talking about comes to the forefront of the conversation. Can Seattle start to find some success offensively? That is not well, how you want to start. <laughs> it's a big nade over the top from Clayson. Now that puts him on five in a row. One off for of earning himself a cruise missile. You can already see the setup for Carolina. Early pushed out towards Junk. You have been map control, and now all of Seattle Surge are forced to fight their way out through bottom chicken coop side. Hook finds one through the map, so at least you're able to put the game clock at a pause. But where the hell is the rest of Carolina? Because you know they're setting up for some pitches. Clean kill from Clay. That gets him number six. Cruise missile now earned. First tick of progress locked, but here comes the retake attempt from the Ravens. Really well done. I mean, the timing is so darn good. Clay from one side, Fellow from red, and then eventually TJ from behind. Completely clears off the zone, and now a couple of the power positions starting to be earned by Carolina as they step through junk and force the Seattle spawns to have to go in. Yeah, they're going to force themselves to overextend a little bit, but now if you are Seattle Surge, you have to worry about your front, your side, and now the cruise missile getting invested. Carolina trying to get this one done early. They do not want to give up a lot of segments, even give Seattle Surge an opportunity to potentially fight their way back into this game. They're making sure that they are maintaining map control majority of the time. You yep. see the sponsor of Seattle Surge all over towards that chicken coop side with only 30 seconds left. You have to try to complete A. Ooh, little juggling of utility right there for TJ. Finds himself another key elimination. Topside castle. Good read on the hook. And wow, I mean, we talked about it on an average of seven lives is what Seattle loses their offense by this one way worse. Three and 14 from 04 just really not able to get anything going. And to be fair, not to really discredit ooh, ooh, him ooh. individually, but what do you do? I mean, Carolina is literally in your face from when you spawn up. Man, this is impossible if you are Seattle, more specifically 04. The ARs from Carolina holding on every single lane. Your ARs aren't winning any of those gunfights. So you're trying to challenge with that rival down across the map. 
Carolina are not giving you any breathing room to even work your way out of the spawn. As they dominate on the defensive end, only allow two segments to get away from them. And you have set yourself up basically to call a game if you are Carolina. You just got to do the same exact thing you did in round number one. Early pressure over towards A, but make sure you're trading officially over towards ticket to stack that point again. And it's one of those things like we got to give some credit here to Carolina. I mean, over the course of this season, the progress has been slow, maybe in certain regards, but steady. I think generally speaking, you know, we saw their success kind of with the immediate change starting to kind of lead itself towards hard point wins. Control started to kind of come around. Search and destroy has probably been the, the least or the last thing rather to kind of be, you know, finding the success train. Yeah. But this has been really, really well constructed by Carolina. Everyone's helping each other. You've got players building streaks for one another. There's really no non-traded kills coming out. I mean, this has been near perfection for Carolina from start to finish. Hey, Clay's just turning back for all the time. 17 and four, They're already earned himself yeah. a cruise missile. The second segment is complete. They're working on the third and you can already see Seattle. They have waved the white flag over at that A point. They're setting up properly, at least for a two minute and 17 hole. Over towards that B segment. You already pushed out towards Junk, but here comes Gwen on the repinch, and Carolina simply not making any mistakes. They're trying to close this one out in three. Yeah. And again, it's not out of hand. Everything feels like, hey, let's just teamwork something. Let's not force individual engagement, which is sometimes kind of a staple of what they've done in the past. Even here, we're trying to teamwork this backdoor position. Nate helps out just a touch. Clayster trying to hold on towards the jump wall, but now has to take his attention forward. Tough gunfight versus Hoop, but doesn't miss. Forehead shots all the way through, and now Clayster's got himself on another five spree. And a rival nine in hand has the prediction on the player in the corner, but the teammates are here to try to assist. Not fully enough to get the engagement, but doesn't make a difference. Clay's 20 and four, another cruise missile tallied. Yeah, and they found a double at the point as well. If TJ can find that second onto 04, you can make this round already Sheesh. be done. But Clayser is getting it done now with the rival nine. He's not going to invest his cruise missile. He's, he's a sole man currently trying to complete this first segment. But he's getting a read on where everyone is coming in. Another great shot for the Yave. Trying to make it nine in a row. Okay, old man. I see you. Wow. I mean, that is blinding from Clayster. TJ, a little bit of trouble. Tries to sneak away towards the back alley. Not going to work out. Life difference of five. Clock at 125. And finally, Seattle starting to get some some motion defensively over towards B. They've got 04 who snuck behind this play. Very unexpected from Carolina. And now all of a sudden, Fellow's got the shoe in the opposite foot as he kind of gets behind oh. but doesn't make a difference. 04 is now on four. And Seattle control the map. Oh, that's good stuff right there from Seattle to locate every single player from Carolina. Reinforce her numbers back over towards Ticket. Now only be down by one life. But you're going to invest that cruise missile. Carolina trying to close out the game now. They should get in girly information on where they're set up, but nothing is going to be able to connect. So now you have to work your way up to the map with the gunny. Yeah, this is all about making a statement. It feels like right now for Carolina. Seattle getting picked apart just a touch over towards red. Still plenty of time on the clock here for Carolina to make a move with a three life difference. Abuza right through Soda Alley. Able to help get this defense a little bit more dynamic as everyone was playing from the front and Gwyn nearly transfers for the double but comes up short. So Seattle clock their biggest ally. Start to back away and set up their defense a little bit more neutral. And this is one more push. All you have to do is withstand one more push because the close spawns come in for Carolina. Fellow with the first kill on to 4 all able to put the game out of pause. But a 2-2 two -two trade. Oh. Back and forth between both of the teams. Fellow's able to find another. Now Seattle serves. They have to just make their way on in. Ball! And the help from Fellow extends to the double onto 04. TJ definitely in trouble. Second tick of progress still being contested. Seattle will get over the jump wall. Tough gunfights coming through, and Hoop just holds down the trigger and sprays for a double. Gwyn, possibly the last hope left. Not sure what to shoot that is. His body's all over the point. Down to the pistol. This is essentially a 1v4 for him. Oh, the position oh. is beautiful. Over the top pocket, gets caught. Seven seconds on the clock. TJ next one up, tries to play through the back, finds Abuza, 5v1, clock stops at 2.8, and Hook will be melted through the doors. Carolina take a 3-0 in the control. Oh, that's good stuff right there from Carolina to respond their way back into this series. They were the better control team on paper before we got into the map number three, and they get that one done with ease. Two attacking rounds, one dominant defensive round, and a great performance out of the old man Clay. This absolutely takes over, earns himself two cruise missiles, and in those final moments, it was Fellow and TJ. The fact that Fellow was able to maneuver his way around Cafe with that MCW, with the Renetti, he was keeping his teammates alive. Hmm. And they knew just enough to close it out in three.
Now we are forced to go to a map number four, which is going to be sub base. But if Carolina were looking for some life, you definitely got it after that control. Oh, big time. And I, I think a lot of it comes from Clay. If there was ever a player you Perfect want guy. roaring on the side of your squad. Yep. I think most would put Clay in the forefront of the conversation. 3,900 damage, 21 of 25 non-traded. Call that the good old fashioned cod hat trick right there all over the board and a chance for carolina to not just you know find a little bit of momentum here in this map number three sub base is not a bad map for them by any stretch of the imagination yeah i'm excited to see them on sub base i remember in the beginning of the season they were one of the teams who always played all the top teams really tight their numbers might not be the best fifth in rotation seventh in holds and seventh in breaks but they have a four and two overall record on the map but every single game basically going down to the wire and then the opposing side for Seattle Surge, just another struggle one for them with the old roster, though. Like, we saw a completely different team in Seattle Surge in HP and map number one. So you find yourself up 2-1 in this series. Obviously, you do not want to lose the control the way that you just did. But you're going into a sub-base HP where you have to be feeling good with the, at least the way you played in map number one. Yeah, 100%. I mean, like we talked about, really, map one and map two, both winnable from either team's perspective. Very gritty series up until this point in map number three where it was very one-sided and... You know, again, the conversation point here for Seattle, you give them a little bit of forgiveness with the not just one player recent change, but it does put a lot of pressure on the roles to also move around just a touch for Seattle. Yeah, you know, Booza kind of stepping more into that main AR spot that RCs was holding previously. So lots of question marks around the control for Seattle, but those aren't going to be individually looked at for this control because sub base hard point. This is going to put a lot of focus and spotlight on 04, who we talked oh, about yeah. can flex, but he's going to have to here and really show up with an AR in hand. You really are, because with the way that Clayson just played in that Karachi, you best believe he's going to try yeah. to chain it into this sub base. And on a map like sub base, where top three is very valuable, top slow is very valuable, those MCWs need to be felt. You cannot allow fellow and Clayser to take over the game with Gwyn at certain moments also pulling out that third MCW. So I just think if you are Seattle Surge, you have to do it with the teamwork. Same way you got it done in map number one to try to get it done in this map number four. Yeah, and again, looking at this reset through the halfway point of the year, there are going to be teams that look at this and say, well, thank goodness. And Carolina is, I think, probably at the top of the list because oh, yeah. <laughs> the maps that have been pulled out of the pool have been miserable for them. 3-11, and 11, as you see on the hard point, but also the 1-8 and eight record on the two search and destroy maps that have been replaced. So you get a little bit of love here, I think, in terms of being able to go to maps that you have found success on. Really, the only maps in the pools for both hard point and search that you'd found success on come by the ones that are still standing. But this isn't just like a, those inactive maps are gone, you've got you know a chance to possibly pull for the playoffs and top six you still have to put the work in to oh, learn yeah. six star and vista to the highest of levels yeah you have to play it every single day we're talking about two new maps that got invested you want to be the best as you possibly can be so you can be prepared versus every single team that you can go against and the good thing for carolina like you said is that they got all the bad maps out the invasion is gone when they were sitting out oh and eight the skid row is gone when they were sitting at two and three so now you got a whole bunch of new maps and uh, the maps that you were actually good at and performing performing well as you took a look at the records right there four and two for carolina one and four for seattle surge but the biggest thing that's a difference is that hold percentage on a map Always. like sub base it has to be better holds because all of these hills can potentially be full 60s seattle surge have to have better setups in those situations yeah flat out i mean seattle across the board not only are their points per hold really bad but they also allow the most opponent opponent per, uh, points per break that comes through so it's not even like they're able to contest. They're just getting absolutely smoked across the board, even when they do well in rotation. So those are the focus points in terms of trying to improve this squad, get them into playoff form. Opening first kills, good. Quinn still holding on to a little bit of room towards bottom glass, but does get shut down and Seattle come away three for one. Yeah, they start off on the preferred side, so they already have a lot of the power positions. And you find those initial couple of fights, but Brezzy falling through top snow now gives an avenue of attack for Carolina to break their way up through P5 to try to take them back control to eventually lead to the break. But it's still Seattle Surge currently with the time in their favor. They have full water control, but here comes Fellow with that MCW up close and personal, able to find a triple, could potentially lead to Carolina break. Yeah, Brezzy last one left and does well to finesse for an extra elimination that will slow down the Carolina rotation pretty current convincingly. Velo though does take down Hook, who was trying to gatekeep over towards the warehouse side. So there's an opportunity as the hard point opens up here at P2 for Carolina to flood from the front. Brezzy playing really far back, but uh, does pretty well. And not fully stereo edge, but pretty close. <laughs> and there's a chance there for Seattle to try to reinforce. 
And now you set up 0-4, who was a player who did fall to potentially find a couple kills on the pinch, but he drops perfect read coming in out of Carolina. So know where the press is coming in. Now the rest of Seattle Surge spawn all the way across the map, but Abuza is still here contesting with that MCW. He's able to find two, but it still leads to Carolina walking away with this remaining time. As now Seattle Surge with only 30 seconds left, you can try to be aggressive up through the front, but you're more focused on maintaining those back spawns for the next hill. And that's the thing, again, you, we want to talk about our words and statistics coming into a live example. It's right there. Seattle, yep. perfect rotation over. You even get a couple of exit kills to make Carolina have to hit you from the front, and you still get broken? It, it just, you don't often see it happen. It's like a solar eclipse. Doesn't happen often, but when it does, it at least Pretty captivates cool. the attention of the public. Yeah. But now off to the rotation at P3, Seattle Surge at least... Won a couple cup fights through the back end to secure those back spawns. Now they're going to be able to take the lead right on back for a little bit, but TJ and Gwyn combined for three. Now you have top snow control. A couple players from Seattle spawning all the way across the map. It turns into Hook versus Fellow in the 1v1, but here comes the reinforcement. Seattle trying to break in through the middle of the tunnel. Problem is, as much as Hook is trying to wait for help, TJ on the split off spawns is also kind of creating issues for Seattle trying to support. So now it's just down to who gets the favorite spawns and eventually Seattle will. So the reinforcements will eventually get here. It does take a lot of time off the hill though, if you're Carolina, which, you know, you don't win the rotation, but you kind of take the status overall. But all of a sudden, Seattle's starting to find a little bit of favor here in front of the hard point as they try to exit over towards Warehouse. Place are still trying to stay in front of their way. Except Tex in front of Abuza does not find damage, but again, Carolina fully combating against the exits, even though Seattle will get the majority of the scrap time. Yeah, and I love the way that Carolina were playing super aggressive up through Warehouse, super aggressive up through the middle of the map because that new hill has yet to pop. So you know there's not a single player from Seattle Surge potentially going to spawn behind us. And you were able to create those layers to so at least keep your player on the point safe for a little bit. But now Seattle Surge have an avenue of attack. They're trying to work their way up the water side. But you can already see Clayster from top snow. TJ's set up on the top of the catwalk for a crossfire. This is perfect, perfect setup for Carolina to take the lead. A forced team kill does come through, so give TJ the credit for the assist there again. Win up front could be the next one challenged through the waterside ramp, and that's enough actually for Seattle to say, whoa, whoa, hold on a second, we can't go this direction, even though it's just a single elimination. The hit was red. Nice shots from Abuza, topside maze, picked up beautifully by Fellow, and for Carolina, this has been absolutely perfect through P4. Yeah, this is a beautiful response. To take the lead right on back, give yourself a 30-point cushion. And now off the rotation towards P5, you just have to eliminate these players from Seattle Surge already pushed out on the backside of the propane tanks. If they're able to at least eliminate 04, but now you got to get past Hook and Abuza who are holding down the hill and also getting aggressive, trying to flip those spawns right on back. Yeah, good move here from Hook once again. The buffer around the hard point, significant. The only hit from Carolina can really come through the middle of the map, but that's hold. It is still finding a couple of eliminations. That until Brezzi gets topside snow on a nasty heady. Gwyn down low doing what he can, but there's really not much you can create from this position. Just try to hold your life, brother, because there's not any angles that look all that great. And, whoa, nice little slide through for TJ. Eliminates Brezzi, and now all of a sudden, this Carolina hit is starting to grow some legs. Yeah, they have an opportunity to bring him in. I thought Brezzi was going to have a freebie. When you find yourself in that situation with the MCW to just singly hold down one doorway, but TJ is able to win an insane gunfight, which eventually leads to the break for Carolina. Only a couple seconds remaining on this P5, but it's all about the spawns, all about the fights, and Fellow with the movement is able to come out on top in that one. And back over towards P1 when we go. Fellow's trying to flip those spawns over Carolina to put themselves yeah. on a preferred side. Yeah, and the two kills that come through over towards the water side allow at least a split spawn moment. Seattle holding their breath, seeing if they can find a little bit of support here from these players spawning out. Gwyn in trouble through staircase side. Fellow quickly trying to get here to give him some support, and he will at least confirm one trait. TJ another, and they get a read on towards Abuza. Top side glass, but it's Hook who surprises. Rapidly making his way into the point, forcing now a 1v1. Still the pistol out, but it's 0-4. Right in the nick of time to save a life, and Seattle still a chance to contest. Yeah, still a chance to contest and still holding on to the preferred side for P2. So if you can walk away with this final 20, win all these gunfights with the middle of the map, you are setting yourself up for a nice little lead change. Coming in from Seattle as they find three in the feed. Now you have to locate the last player in Grin. 0-4, it's your turn to shine. He's able to find that kill. So it should Ooh. be Seattle Surge winning the rotation over towards next, but with Fellow finding that double, Carolina are already going to be here. Fellow's been incredible this map. He has yes, won he has. a number of unbelievably key eliminations. 
Unfortunately, we say that and he nades Clayster Tough. towards the hard point. So Seattle will win this rotation over towards new TJ playing on the backside, though, can make a mess of spawns. 04 not really in a position to chow this. And yeah, that's Seattle spawning out. Now the hit from Carolina. Initial trades looking pretty good. Hook last one standing over towards Secret. He's forced to take the engagement. And with that, Carolina will confirm a break, but they don't spawn in. A chance for Seattle to bounce right back. Yeah, they got a chance to fight their way back on in, in the game. And if you don't find success here, this is where Carolina can start to pull away with it. Because there's only 25 remaining, 25 seconds remaining on this P2 with Brezzy with that double. Elise secures the final 24 Seattle surge, so they will be able to take the lead right on back. But Carolina have to have a response here at P3. You can already see a couple players through the middle of the map creating those layers to make it easier for his teammates to soak up some much needed hill time. But a big one-on-one -on -one gunfight through the back end, 0-4 and win for the spawns. Yeah, 04 found the opener, but can't do anything more beyond that. And, ooh, Carolina are setting a very aggressive zone around this hard point. I mean, Clay and TJ are so far forward. Where does Seattle spawn here? Do they spawn in? Not fully. We've got ourselves a little foot race over towards the hard point. Every engagement, a critical one, and Carolina coming out largely on top of it, but Seattle will spawn in. No one was in the hard point, and TJ off the angle will get overwhelmed. So Seattle find a way to spawn in, largely thanks to Carolina playing so far forward and a chance for Seattle to grow their lead. Oh, that's a big play from Seattle. Sure, to play that one patient off of the kill cams. Simply hold down your cam and wait for Carolina to make a mistake so you can still hold down those back spawns and potentially walk away with this final 30, but those spawns now flip. This is not what you want if you are the Carolina Ravens because you got a full 60 at this P4 last time around, but it's going to be Seattle Surge now fully set up and this is where they have to make up for it. It cannot be an early break. Yeah. We'll see what happens. Gwyn, good opener. Creates an opportunity for them to work around the backside of the Seattle will not spawn over towards the sub. So this is all about who wins these engagements at mid map. Old chow from Hook, but team shots are good. Two for one goes the exchange. Seattle will spawn in, but Carolina has his threat. Building over towards the top side at Maze, plus support coming over towards the water side. And kills are coming, and they're coming quickly. Three players will drop. Seattle have to leave the hard point. One player will spawn here in the form of 04. Abuza doing what he can to keep his life, but this is really where the hard point will be won. This potential 1v1 between Gwyn and 04, and it's Gwyn on seven in a row, winning it with the Renetti, and Carolina reclaim the lead. And that's the rookie just making some of the best plays I've ever seen. We're talking about on a five spree, playing it super slow over towards P2. He knew he needed one kill to earn himself a cruise missile, but the one kill that he got was able to flip the spawns for Seattle, and then he wins the one-on-one -on -one onto 04 to secure the spawns for his team. The rookie time and time again is just making plays for this Raven squad as they're going to find himself up by 20. And now if you need to break in towards this P5, you got a cruise missile. It's definitely going to play a big part. Could be a photo finish here. Seattle currently in the hard point. Quinn says this is the time for us to pull out the crews. Should deal with at least one, but no, everyone to cover cleanly, and Seattle will take down three eliminations on the backside of the cruise missile. An absolute folly as Seattle continues to win the eliminations, and with that, now they get back into the lead. And now Carolina have to fight their way out of the spawn. They are not on the preferred side to try to break their way in towards P5. They know they can't apply pressure up the warehouse. We have to try to attack through the middle of the map. Quinn with the beat down at least starts off the engagements, but the crossfires of Seattle are ready for the push to come in. Two for one goes the exchange again. This could be the potential last hit for Carolina on this hard point. And it's a pinch stripe kill feed. Abuza off the regen. Big win. Finds the win versus TJ. Still 12 seconds to fight for. No chance to win here, clearly. But this is all about who can control the high ground surrounding the first hard point. And Carolina are starting to find some motion on the map. They have top snow. They currently have top three. They have the preferred side of the spawns as well. Just got to win a couple gunfights over towards the water side. Seattle able to at least trade a little bit better on that side. So they're able to at least maintain a little bit of the map control, but oh. 224 to 204, TJ's able to win a one-on-one -on -one big gunfight versus Abuza as they're trying to take all of Water Street side. TJ starting to find himself in final form, 31 and 21, and a hell of a second set of hills for him. Taken by surprise, though, 04 from bottom glass does well. Fellow trying to just kind of find pot shots into the hard point. Keep it neutral at worst. Quinn from the interior overwhelmed. Seattle trying to make their motion across the map. Where does the Carolina spawn happen? And it's right on top of P2. Once again, we're going to see another hill here. It just comes down to what Carolina can do on rotation. And Felony helps it out with a couple of wins over towards P1. Yeah, Carolina got to make it happen right here off this rotation. You win this rotation, you're basically going to force the game five, but you can already see Seattle Surge taking a lot of ground up to the propane side. 
As they're applying pressure through the back end, TJ just got to play your life, at least set up Clayster for the double. He's able to hit the stun, which makes the second kill a lot easier. But do you read the third player going on the pinch? No, you get some team fire assists out of TJ. So Carolina are able to hold. They're able to take the lead. And it's only 15 points until they force game five. Oh, and Fellows just making this so difficult for Seattle. Five seconds remain. Is anyone really get here in time? Hook would have to smoke one and then get into the hard point. Kenny Mantle and jump in in time. Doesn't matter. TJ caps off a great map four with the final kill. And Carolina will send us into a map five after a great sub base hard point. Woo! A nail by the hard points between both of these two teams so far. Map number one was really close. And map number four even closer. But Carolina in the final moments just get it done off the rotation. It was felony again with the double from comm side. He relieves some of that pressure through the middle of the map. And then all you have to do is trade efficiently. But off the spawn, even with Seattle Search taking a lot of map control up to the left side. Clayster was able to hit that attack, find a double through the back end, get a little bit of assistance from TJ, who, like you said, had himself one hell of a map. 34 and 22, 27 non-traded kills, puts up less damage than Gwen, but those two young men got it done for Carolina now to force the game five. Huge. What a thriller of hardpoint maps we've had in this series. Holy cow, like we talked about, first two maps was really anyone's game. You can say the same thing here about map number four, and now we start to look into the unknown. Six, star, search, and destroy. And I think just to kind of marinate before we had to break here, Jay, you got to talk about the fact that Seattle had been great in search and destroy. It doesn't really matter yeah. what the venue is, but this is brand new. Uh, now it's just down to who's prepped better. Hopefully they figure it out early on for the six star in game number five because for a new squad, it does wonders to come out here and win your first match because then it tells you like, well, we made this roster change for a reason and it showed right off the rip. But if you come back and get reverse swept here, it's probably going to demoralize the hell off Seattle Surge yeah. and definitely boost up Carolina. But this has been one hell of a match so far and it couldn't end any better than other than a map five on six star, baby. It's going to be a good one. Critical series again, points matter big time as we start to get past the halfway point in the overall season. So this map five has a lot riding on it for these two bubble teams. We'll be back on the backside of the break to figure out who surpasses the other when we come back after this. Upgrade your game with the Scuff, the official controller of the Call of Duty League. Slice up your competition with the Executive Chef Operator, now available in-game in the Call of Duty store.
kick it off sunday ride the map five potential reverse sweep two teams literally sitting just underneath the top eight mark still plenty of season to play it feels like a fresh season i'm sure for both of these two squads with the new maps new roster for one of the two but it comes down to the first ever six star search and destroy that we've seen so far in broadcast jay give me your thoughts just hit me with it uh, I'm excited to get into one. Obviously, six star use so many different things you have to be accounted for. Water routes, low secret, over towards that eight bomb site. You have to be prepared for a lot of aggression up the middle of the map as well, because this map can tend to play really, really fast at sometimes, or really slow, depending on what squad of what kind of strategies they're gonna come out with. But I'm excited to get into this one, man. New search and destroy map, new bomb sites, new strategies. We get to see it all for the first <laughs> time here in this game five. And again, just looking at the, how the history has gone over the course of this season for both these two teams, Seattle still finds themselves kind of the top half of overall search and destroy squads on the year. It's hard to put a really, you know, a finger on what we're going to expect here. But, you know, you take in mind kind of where the success has come from. It's been in good control in the first 30, 45 seconds, finding first bloods or at least minimizing it if it does happen against you. So that may be one of the big difference makers in this one as both these two teams square off on our first ever look at six star search here in the broadcast. And I love the way that Carolina playing this right off the rip. You just spread Matt penalty for the early setup on where the pressure is coming in and they get a good read on Seattle surge, basically stacking over towards this eight bomb site. So it's on the other two players across the map, trying to work their way up through water side, just still holding down their positions to wait to see if Seattle surge is trying to get aggressive up through the map. This is all about contact here. Bressy, nice clean shot sports fellow. First blood tally hoop follows up. And they get the read that, yep, there's still still one more player here. So now you look to Gwyn. Can he create something through the middle of the map? No, snapped on by Abuza just before things started to get messy. Ooh. But the damage tally gets collected. And all of a sudden, TJ working on a 1v3 has plenty of time for what is now just an instant 1v1. Yeah, and that's one of those situations where you're in a 3v1 of your Seattle. The only way you lose a damn round is if he plants the bomb and kills all three of you. There's no reason why we should try to get aggressive up through the spawn and play the buddy system. Walk right into the frame of TJ, and he finds the timing to close out the round. Carolina losing the first two kills, put themselves in a 4v2, but that's why you got Haley. The guy's been getting it done in search and destroy for a really long time, and already on the first round on six star, finds himself in a 1v3. Yeah, and, you know, again, it's one of those situations that you could obviously kind of criticize Seattle to stay back, play your numbers, but at the same rate, they know they've got TJ completely isolated over towards security. That smoke that he puts down, though, creates maybe just a moment of doubt. And then the rewrap back right to Gwyn, who is trying to create an opportunity at mid. Works out perfectly with the damage he was able to tally. So small miscue, small punish for the mistake. Leads to a 1-0 count for Carolina. And TJ, not just the 1v3, also had the ace. As Seattle looked to get very aggressive. Lots of utility and nades over towards U-Haul. But Carolina has the response, and they collect first blood. And I love that setup right there from Carolina. You saw Seattle, they were all out aggressive up to that eight point. Carolina, their difference on the, the defensive round was all out pressure up through mid you. Use your tax to find the opening first kill. And you take mid map control. Now you're able to rotate towards both sides for free. And with Seattle Surge now in the man disadvantage, are slowly working their way up the water side. And this is going to be completely open. You just got to work yeah. the objective. Does who get the commitment to call for the plan? He does. Carolina just looking to play retake. Very passive, to say the least. How do they set up this retake attempt, though? Three players at mid-map. They have the opportunity of tracking back, pushing through, or going deep. As Abuza is the one watching the flank here, and he is going to be tested, Jay. I mean, he's going to have a 1v3 of his own. Gets surprised through the vents. And now this rest of the post plant has, has to bunker down and see if they can find the kills. Just got to trade officially if you are Carolina. Try to set up TJ also for a free kill to earn himself a cruise. He's able to find his six in a row. Now it's Hook left in the 1v3. He does take down Gwyn. He also what? does take down Clayster. And now it's ring around the Rosie. I don't know if TJ has enough time. Oh, no. He's got to make the commitment right here, right now. Here's Hook for the check. The shots are through. Wow. Not the 1v3 on the other side. Whoa. I mean, we've had ourselves a barn burner here. But two back-to-back -back 1v3s. Marcy. Ooh, that's who just making next level plays, man. We're talking about him around the, the half wall, around the canopy. Just works his way with that rival nine. Finds the initial two fights and then gains the information that TJ is definitely behind me. Let me just keep on circling. And he wastes enough of that game clock to secure the round. Two back-to-back -back 1v3s to tie us up at one. Unreal. I mean, again, it's for some people just Seattle versus Carolina, but... This is not a series to be slept on. 
by Eddie Foreman for good reason. It has been exciting to say the least, and it's not going to stop here. Quick aggression over the top at this mid planner. Prezi double good response. Hook follows up for three, and the opening engagement pretty darn perfect for Seattle as they find the final. No worries. Yeah, that's good stuff right there from Seattle. Just staying strong on that defensive setup, but you can already see Carolina. They were trying to go back to what didn't work in first round with trophy system is still did not work. Seattle surge more specifically Brezzy. He's able to find three on the round. A little bit of assistance right there from Hook, but they shut down that early A pressure. Very, very quick defensive setup right there from Seattle to put them back in the advantage. Oh, boy. And hey, I, I don't think we're going to be uh, surprised to see more interactions like that <laughs> over the top of the A site. It almost feels like Mercado-esque in a way. Throw your nades, jump forward, see if you win your gunfights. This time, Brezzy playing a little bit more passive initially. Cooking up a frag that's intended towards TJ's direction. And it will hit plus oh! all clean shots as TJ gets caught peeking through mid. I thought TJ must have thought he was Iron Man or something. Like he was just going to eat that nade, still square up. But at least the first blood for Seattle. And now you have full A side control. You're trying to push out towards the deep lanes, but Clayson makes you pay for it through mid connector to even up the numbers at a 3v3. But the bomb should get planted. 0-4 in a crucial position to at least yeah. put himself back in the advantage. There's a little pixel peek through the dry bar. Leaves enough time for Brezzy to plant and reposition. Clayster through mid. Win at the moment, still off the deep side towards the sky bridge. Abuza all the way towards top security window. And as soon as Clay gets a look saying no one's really all that nearby, it has to be up close and personal. Wait, Gwyn able to find one down low. A little wrap from Brezzy kind of leads us to a nice, nice little 1v1. Abuza playing forward. Now backs down over towards the back staircase. Gwyn, a lot of work to be done here. Moving quickly. Does he get a full read on this? Yeah, sees him. Has to force the gunfight, though. And oh, it's just another one of those moments where you just create time and space. Abuza still wins the 1v1, but even if he doesn't, he positions himself into a spot where there's no way Gwyn was getting back to that bomb in time. That's just perfect plays right there out of Abuza. Good shoulders work. The dance moves were on point. And just like you said, not enough time for Gwyn to get the kill and eventually stick that defuse. As Seattle Surge walk away with the attacking ground. Now starting to pull away in this search and destroy a little bit more. If you are Carolina... Try to make a play through the middle of the map. Try to take mid-map control again because as I'm looking at this mini-map, it really does remind me of Raid. We're talking yeah. about B-bomb all the way pushed out towards Tiki. A on the opposite side, which is the closer bomb to go. When you're trying to attack over towards P, it's probably very difficult because it's basically in the opposing team's base. Yeah, it's very true. And there's also just so many weird angles as the defense seems to have a lot of just easy control at mid-map. And how about this? Hook is going to step forward. Wait, this is going to be a cruise missile called in, but TJ gets taken down. Good trade from Fellow. And the follow-up also perfect from Carolina. So value out of the cruise missile, even though it got a little sloppy on the initial engagement, looks to have 0-4 and another 1v3 opportunity. And yeah, that could have got scary, man, because yeah. once you take down TJ, he's no longer able to control that cruise missile. So all you can do is just simply call out for information, but at least his teammates are able to find all the kills. Now you're forcing 0-4 into 1v3. Just was not ready for the repositioning out of Carolina as Clayster finds the final. But at least the cruise missile didn't lose you around. At least you yeah. walk away with the W even though it doesn't find a kill. Yeah, it's one of those things that, you know, you're maybe not looking for kill potential on this map with the cruise, but it does force the hand of Seattle to have to play forward or take yeah. a very, very passive retreat. So ultimately the creation comes through fine for the what is a needed round here for carolina you did not want to drop down early 4-1 so back to more level terms and i think the question was going to be like is there ever going to be major set plays to try to win out mid map because it just feels like it's just so free for the defense and once again seattle just kind of avoids it not going to bother spending utility to try to win out mid and instead they're going to play on the outside of the map carolina make them pay for it so now it's 3-2 Carolina back on the defense. They're able to isolate Clayster. Clay knows all the information is coming over towards his B point, but is that TJ investing the cruise missile again? Was he able to save it in his back pocket? Because I hear one coming down, and he's able to find the first blood onto 04. Big plays out of Carolina. Yeah, don't know how that just happened. <laughs> Me either. I mean, he was definitely in the tablet. Uh, okay. Oh, Gwyn, nice double. Leaves everything back to Hook again, but this one a little bit more dire of a situation. 1v4 instead of the 1v3. Finds Fellow cleanly. Decent read towards Gwyn. Shots also there, but support nearby allows Clayster to come in and make sure nothing crazy happens. 
Yeah, the fact that TJ was able to keep that cruise missile, it definitely yeah. catches Seattle off guard. They were not expecting that. When you're going over towards the beat bomb, you're thinking the, the skies are going to be clear. We don't have to worry about any streaks coming in because that's when you're going to find the most success over towards B. But once you get that first one with the cruise missile, you get the, all the info to your teammates. Gwen is able to find a double through the curve wall, but we're taking a look at the replay. He pulls out the tablet, even with the quick hands. He dies early enough to huh? where it doesn't even blow up out of the missile. So he's able to receive and retrieve that cruise missile for the next round. I'm sure Seattle's not going to be happy about that. I'm sure many people in chat are spamming question marks right now. <laughs> Lots of engagement ceremoniously so over the top at A. Trophy system only denies a handful of the utility being thrown. And how about this? Carolina, they must have gotten at least some sort of information that, hey, Seattle stacked the box here over at A. And so now they've got mid-map for free. Abuz is on an island towards B, and he realizes, I got to pick and choose my battles wisely here because you're under threat of being overwhelmed from multiple angles if you step too far forward. Yeah, Seattle Stars, they do exactly what they've done on the previous defensive rounds. All lot pressure over towards the A-bomb, but this time, Carolina, they try to retake through the middle of the map. Abuz is able to find the first blood onto Clayson, but that bomb is now going to get planted. You're forced to retake down to 4v3. I just don't know how you make this happen, TJ. After the plant, just slips backwards. And he does at least catch somebody over the top, surely. But Gwyn, waiting for the delayed pinch, denied. And now it's just down to Fellow. Wow, clean on this retake of Seattle. Taking advantage of the numbers, to be sure. Fellow hoping and praying, taking orders at the bar. And there is more capacity than he was ready to handle. So Seattle's retake clean and kind of comes in surprising form. First time we've really seen the middle of the map stay that far open for the defense. Yeah. They were able to execute that retake to perfection. When you find the first blood onto Clayster, and then you're able to isolate these players, working your way through the middle of the steps, working your way through back P3 and also P2. They were able to attack that B site from multiple different angles, find all the kills, and then Fellow left in the 1v4. Because he must have not been the best of a bartender because everyone was still waiting for a drink. Seattle Surge got a little bit mad. They take care of him, and now they take back the advantage in the search and destroy. Good stuff to this point. Again, back and forth we go. First bloods. Really not amounting to as much as we would have figured. Lots of clutches already coming through here. But a great map from Hook at 8 and 5. Same can be said for TJ as once again, trophy system's down. Both teams stacking over towards this A site. 3v4 situations underway, but the delayed nades do tag up Clay. He's trying to get back towards safety, but just not a lot of opportunity to do so. Good follow-up from the SMGs of Seattle, and they're not done yet. They even get the read on to Gwen. It's a flawless round for Seattle, and a hell of a statement to make late in this map five. That's beautiful plays right there out of the surge. They were just like, they cannot mess with us over towards this A-bomb site. So the maximum they can have in trophy systems is going to be two. But we're going to throw all eight tags. If something connects, we're just going to full on send it up through the A site. And they find all four kills right at the moment to secure the attacking round. And Seattle Surge so far staying strong in search and destroy, man. These guys are using teamwork to perfection to not put themselves at game point. What do you call here for Carolina? Let's go Four man flood to A. <laughs> Hope and pray the nades land. Oh, Ford playing kind of a counter spot here at U-Haul with an SMG, but it doesn't make a difference. Opening nades for Seattle once again, finding success. And look at this. Oh, uh, you think Seattle's feeling it? Aggression right through Aqua. And a chance to possibly isolate towards Fellow. A lot for him to do here. Hello. It's all about running away. And that delays the gunfights a little while longer, but the bomb doesn't get planted. And Seattle will catch the bomb carrier out. The alarm bells didn't ring soon enough, and Seattle will take map five in a critical series. Wow, new roster looking just as strong on the search as any other previous one had. They're feeling good, man. Seattle Surge, they complete this series and not allow them to be the first team reverse swept so far in stage three. They close it out in the game five, the first time we were able to see six star search to destroy. And they played that great. It was non-stop aggression every single round over towards that A-bomb. And they were usually the team to come out on top. But when you're finding multiple first bloods, then you're allowed to hit a couple routes. You have players working on the deep pinch. And then you saw a felony in through the top of that room with those double doors closed. Believe it or not, Alan, those are bulletproof. So yep. Fellow was getting all the info that there's multiple players on the back end. I cannot fight all these guys by my damn self. And unfortunately, he wasn't able for everyone from Seattle Surge to bombard that side of the map. They they find all the kills in the final round. They walk away with the search of the choice 6-3.
And that honeymoon stage is hitting different. Even with 04 going 3 7, 533 damage, teamwork was on point today for Seattle to secure their first win of stage three. Wow. I mean, no shortage of electricity in this series. Maybe save just map number three, which was pretty one sided. Everything else 